Hello! Hi, how are you today? Welcome to our class number 13. Oh, it's so it's supposed to be a live class, but today I decided to do recorded because it's a bit weird. I didn't know if it was going to take, I really want to do under an hour. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I, I decided to do recorded. I might speed up the sewing part so it's not so boring for you to watch. But yeah, this is our class. And today we're going to make a flapper dress. What is a flapper dress? Uh, a flapper dress is what they called the 1920s style, you know, like the Great Gatsby kind of style. I thought it was a good thing for Halloween. I know, um, you know, you might not want it for Halloween. I'm actually making a, a, a dress for myself that I can wear anytime. I just think it's a beautiful style, but it could also be for Halloween. Depends how you style it, right? Um, and so this is actually a recipe. It's like a instruction thing that's called the one hour dress. I think it's from that time they would teach a woman how to make this dress in under an hour, right? And I've made it a couple of times. It's easy once you know what you're doing. And so, uh, you know, the first time I did was a little funny, but then I, I made a couple other times and it's great and it's easy. So, um, you know, it's just easy. You just have to follow the instructions. Okay. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. And I hope you enjoy. I hope you make it, um, and show it to me if you can. So I'm, I'm leaving my Instagram handle down here. If you don't follow me yet, uh, please go follow and then send me a message showing the dress you made. Okay. Also, I'm going to, I'm going to drink cause this dress doesn't really have a pattern. It's just like instructions and, you know, certain things that you have to follow and I'll show it I'll show what it, how it is during class, but then if you want to get written and everything, I'm going to post it in our Facebook group. That's where I post the free patterns and you can t uh, answer questions. You know, it's our little community. It's a wardrobe school um, Facebook group, okay? It's a private group, so we can just show our stuff, show our mistakes. It's great. And I'm also leaving the link here below, okay? Also, please subscribe share the video to your friends if you think somebody would enjoy and yeah let's get started so basically let's talk about the materials right since there's no pattern um that's that's easy we don't have to deal with a pattern and uh i chose so what fabric you're gonna use and that's a little tricky what i chose it's linen i just and i chose black linen because i don't have many colors here that would work for me um, and so I thought the, the, the black linen that I had would be great. And it's going to be a timeless dress for me to wear forever. And the only thing is I know for showing here is not the best color, but today we're going to have to bear with it. Okay. And so how much you need, you need at least three, three, <laughs> three yards of fabric. And, um, you know, if you can get three and a half, it'll be safer. But then if you have at least three, it would be great. I didn't have any long piece of fabric like that. I haven't bought like yardage of fabric in a while. And I have two pieces of linen. So pretend that I have one piece, okay? And then I'll show you how, to, how you would cut from three uh, yard piece. But mine is, is split in two, but it'll work anyway, okay? So I got two pieces, right? That should be one. And then uh, I also have this lace. So I'm going to experiment and try to add lace to this dress. And uh, if you have any embellishment that you like, you know how the 1920s style is. Like, you know, they have a flower in the, in the shoulder sometimes or a bowl, stuff like, stuff like that. Okay. And then tools, what we're going to need is, you know, the chalk. We're really, uh, we really need like a um, contrasting color of the chalk of the fat, you know, chalk in a contrasting color with the fabric. Scissors, so I have the straight scissors and the pinky shears that I like to use. And uh, measuring tape or uh, the wooden yard ruler. The seam ripper, hopefully we're not gonna use it. And sewing pins, okay? And then uh, I have the French curve. If you, here, if you have any curve, it will help. If not, you can just trace by hand. It's not hard. And then I also have a regular ruler that will help me to, to you know, trace and everything. So it's, it's, it's handy. It's good to have. And the iron, our best friend. A sewing machine, the thread in the same color. And that's it. And the ironing board. I use this thing that, you know, if you've been to my classes before, is my ironing board. But it could be just be like a table or whatever. 
Okay, so let's start from the top. First thing is we have to take our measurements, okay? And so, and I put a little cheat sheet for me here so I can follow with it. So we need basically what it is, four measurements, okay? And how it is, is so the first measurements, and this dress we're gonna make in six, there'll be six uh, uh, steps to make the dress and we need four measurements, okay? So then the first measurement is the blouse length. And look, this dress is fun, is weird, and that's why I like about it. <laughs> so uh, the way they cut it, you know, it's like a, it's, it's different. So it's very interesting. Uh, and so just follow it step by step, you know, trust the, the process and you get there, okay? So, and how they measure the, the blouse length, it's weird. So the waist is here, right? And they tell you to mark two, two yards, oh, two, two inches below your waist. I did that before, it wasn't long enough, so I'm gonna put, because if I put two inches below my waist, it would just be like right here, and it's not gonna be much drop waist, like the 20s. So I went a little longer, and then that made me add a little, a little more than four, okay? So, and then what they do is, they tell you to do is that you put a pin here, where you want the length to be, and then you drop your tape down there and then measure like this. Something like that. From the from the from the top of the shoulder here, where your shoulder meets your neck, and then you measure here, and mine was like 40. Okay? And then add two inches to that. So I'm gonna add four inches actually. So my number is 44. Okay, basically is you put a pin, just repeating so you don't confuse. Put a pin below your waist, drop the tape all the way to the back and here, and this whole length here, they tell you to add two inches. I'm gonna add four inches, okay? But you can add two if you want, all right? So it's two inches extra here, measure it, and then add more two, more two inches, okay? Um, also, this, I would recommend you to cut on a muslin before or some other fabric that you don't care about, so you test. Because the first time I made this dress was huge. This time, let's see, I think, you know, I think it would be better. <laughs> it might be too big, but I'll try, okay? But then it's always good to, like, uh, test before so you don't make a mistake. Um, okay, the length, so it's 44, that's the first measurement. The second measurement is the skirt length. So you are gonna drop the tape down, you know, the tip of the tape down, and then you see where, so the, the tip of your tape is gonna go where you want your length to be. Down there, and then up to where your thing is, and then you add two inches, because that's the hem and stuff. So for me, how much I measured before is like 28 total. Yeah, see, like, because it was 27, and then I added two inches, or two or one, I don't know. I, I wrote down 28, so I'm gonna work with 28. It's not the full length, it's like half calf or something like that, okay? For me, it's like that. I recommend you to do long, but look, it's not, it depends on, and this is gonna depend on how wide your fabric is, because they cut across. So if you have like a wide fabric, great. If you don't, it will be the length that the fabric has. you see when you look at the process, but it's good to know at least like how much or less you want your skirts to be. So mine is 28, the skirt length, okay? And then the hip, the hip measurement. So the hips is like where, uh, I don't have much like, I'm traumatized, I wish I was more curvy. As a Brazilian woman, I don't have much hips, but uh, I'm kind of flat. But you, how you measure your hips is basically like your, the widest part of your body, right? Of your, and this is in your butt, where your butt is like wide here. That's your hip. So to me, for me is 30, 37. Yeah, that's what it says on my, on my cheat sheet there. Yeah, okay, so my hip, you don't add anything, that's it, 37. That's the third measurement. Now the fourth measurement is your armhole. So it's this, because it's basically for the sleeve and the arm opening. And you just measure like here, a little loose. Not so tight, okay? And that would be 
for me is like 20. Look how, you know, I left a little room here. You can make it bigger if you want, but that I think is good for me. So it's from the shoulder, just place the tape on your shoulder and allow it a little loose and measure it. So 20 total, okay? So with these four measurements, we can make this dress. Then uh, we're gonna cut the blouse. So this for me, I already have the size for the blouse, but basically that's how you're gonna do. Uh, pretend your fabric, this is your fabric, right? It's long, this is the salvage of your fabric. And uh, so you're gonna get the chip. I'm folding it right now because my table is narrow, but you don't need to fold it. Uh, basically, you're gonna have, now keep in mind your light, uh, your blouse length, and that is 44 for me, right? And I'm gonna measure from one side, see how this is where I cut it, and this is where, um, this is the salvage. So long-wise, lengthwise on the, on the salvage, I'm gonna measure 44 inches, which is my blouse length, okay? So I get my tape. and I measure 44 and here it is okay so 44 inches don't mind my nails that I have <laughs> I haven't uh, taken care of them so you just do a little snip there and you can some fabrics will rip apart some some fabrics won't this one's lean and it will be okay so I'm just gonna like Okay, so this is the blouse that's 44 inches long, and that would be for the skirt, right? Whatever else you have. So let's say this was three yards. I took 44 inches, and then whatever is left is for the skirt. So you just put it on the side. And I'm going to use this. So pretend this is this, okay? Uh, now I got the blouse part here. And I'm going to fold it lengthwise. Where it is, yeah. So I'm gonna match. Um, match my salvage, salvage lines together. And salvage, if you don't know what it is, just the edge of the fabric that usually comes finished like this. Every fabric has that, okay? Um, and then I, f I do that and then I crease just marking the fold line here. You can iron it as well if you want. But if you like your hand, your hands are warm and you do that, it helps already, okay? And so, okay, so I have the two salvage together. Now I'm gonna fold in half again. All right, I fold it lengthwise and then I fold it crosswise. Is that how you say it? I guess so. <laughs> okay, so that's that. And then this corner here, so the, the savage is towards me, right? Look, right here, and the fold is here. And if you go to the Facebook group later, I'll post this there, the drawing as well that they have in the instructions so you can understand, okay? If you forget. Um, and then what you do is that you crease again. Let me just fold it nicely here. Crease it here very nice, very like strong. And then you unfold it. Basically, this was just to mark this part, okay? And you can even iron if you want. Then I'm gonna unfold it, and I have that nice crease there, see? Okay, so from there, now, now I'm gonna need the chalk and my tape again. And so the next step is to mark 
four inches down. On this line here, so four. Okay, to the left, I'll mark four as well. And they recommend four and a half, but I remember the first time I made this was too open and I'm gonna do a little smaller and then I can just open up more later, okay? And so towards the left is four inches, towards the right is one inch. And I mark here, okay? Then I need, then that's when the curve comes handy. And I'm gonna do this and that we're what we're gonna do here where we're doing here right now is the collar right like the the neck opening so i just want to like trace my neck now it's always good to have 90 degrees here okay and then the back so this is the front neck 90 degrees 90 degrees here and 90 here and then trace it Let me just match the, the 90 degrees Do it by hand and you can totally do this by hand if you feel more comfortable. Okay Great now I'm gonna cut that Turn it around. So just cutting the neck opening. Trying to keep the angle here. That's it. Okay, so it's looking weird. But then what you do is you open up. And then you got your front neck and your back neck. It's like magic. <laughs> okay, so we got that now. And keep it folded. Now we're gonna work on the sleeves. Make sure all the lines are aligned. And we're gonna fold in half. So here's the neck. I'm gonna fold it like this. And have my neck on the side. And all the salvage lines are here. Line them up very nicely. All right, especially the shoulder line here. So this is the show. Oh, you're not seeing that, right? But here it is. This is the shoulder line. And I have to make sure that it's aligned. Crease it. Okay, then what the measurements I'm gonna need now are, um, oh, I don't have my calculator because of my phone, <laughs> but so what I need is, I need the measurements of my hips and my armhole, okay? So the hips are, my measurement is 37. So I gotta divide that by four. And I could do by heart, is it'll be, let me do here. 37. Oh. Divided by four. 
that is 925. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> so, so I have my measurement that is 37. Uh, so divided by four is nine and a half, nine point two twenty five, nine and a quarter. Okay. And why that is, is because, you know, we have our, um, hips, you know, our body, and I'm trying to find one quarter of my body, right? That's why we need this measurement here. So it's, um, it's 925 here in the bottom. I'm gonna have to find this measurement here. But then I add one inch and a half for the ease, right? So it's nine points of nine and a quarter by one and a half. So that would be 10 and three quarters, okay? So you just divide your hip measurement by four and add one and a half inch. For me, it would be 10 and three quarters of an inch. So I'll find this measurement here, oops. Ten and three quarters. Okay. And then for the sleeve, we need half of the measurement of the armhole. So mine was 20, remember? Half of that is 10. So I'm going to measure from the top to the bottom here. 10, right on the edge. right here. And now what I need to do is to make a curve. I need to draw a curve line here that comes from my sleeve to my waist. Here it is. Okay. And so I could just trace it by hand or just use my ruler, my curve. So I go like this. up a little and then I go here to see on the encounter here look and life is easy with the curve Woohoo! okay so then I have my blouse now I gotta just cut it and I'm gonna cut with the pinky shears because they are then I don't have to zigzag inside or surge or anything. That's my finishing. Oops. By the way, for you guys that ask me, Caesars, good brains of Caesars. So this is the best brain, I think. It's made in Brazil. It's not because I'm from Brazil myself, but it's really good. It's, and as an international brand, it's Mundial. It's M-U-N-G-I-A-L, okay? Just a little detail here, because I always hear like, Vanya, what's the best? Caesars, that's it. And I'm gonna trim it here just to be, make sure it's nice. Okay. So we got our blouse cut. And we're gonna put it on the side. And then we're gonna move on to the skirt. And for that, I gotta put my machine a little further because the skirt is a little longer. Don't need the curve anymore. I can put it back there. Um, and then I'm gonna grab Oops, the other part of the fabric. So that's the leftover, right? The other side. And um, what we're gonna do is fold it lengthwise. Let's see. So just match the salvages together. Oh no, one thing you do first is to get, I forgot. Uh, if you wanna have a belt, you just cut the belt uh, from here. So it's two inches.
Yeah, that's the first step from the skirt. So you just, in one savage, all, all the length, you cut two inches long. Okay. Two inches. Opa. All right, so then we trim the, this belt here. I know it doesn't look straight for you, but it's a straight. <laughs> it's just the angle of my phone, okay? But it is straight. It's one straight uh, strip here that is our belt. Then I'm gonna put it on the side. Okay, so I trimmed the belt. Now I have this big piece of fabric. Okay, that would be my salvage here and that would be my salvage here. I'm not gonna fold lengthwise first. I'm gonna fold in half, really, like uh, across. So I fold it. And that's what I say when you, if you had a longer piece, then you'd have, you know, more material here. But so this is my, the material I have. And I'm going to work with whatever is left, okay? I mean, after you cut the blouse. Um, and then from here, what I'm going to do is measure my skirt length. Remember how we had in the beginning when I measured like the length like this? So mine was 28 inches, and I'm gonna measure from this edge here. Or it could even be the, from there, right? The salvage, but then it's, here's where I cut the, you know what, I'm gonna use the salvage actually. Because then I don't have to do finishing. <laughs> so, yeah, I have the salvage here, you see? Fold it in half, and I'm gonna measure my skirt length from here to here. So it's basically like 28 from here to there, all right? I'm gonna fold just because my table can handle. Half of 28 is 14. I'm gonna do 30 because then I can have even a little more so then I can have a longer dress. Why not? Because it's always easier to shorten, right, than lengthen. My skirt. Um, wow, 32. <laughs> that's really long. But that's good. So then I'm just gonna cut, cut here. Trying to save. And if you have any questions, you can leave your questions here in the comments or just join the group and there I can show you, you know, inside of the Facebook group, I can make a video to show you if you have any question, but it should be easy, right? Okay, so now I have this two parts, right? And this is the front and the back of my skirt. So this is the front and this is the back. And then my salvage here, look, the salvage is gonna be the waistline, okay? And how, and what I'm gonna do is, well, first I have to trim here. So I have two pieces, which I'm probably gonna uh, sew together later, but it's good for weight. You know, I just, you see when I'm sewing it. If you're lazy, you can just skip this together like that and that's it okay but basically that's what it is the skirt is like that this is you know go like this and for me to remember I'll just mark the center it's like this if I you know I do a little snip here 
And then I know this is the center front and the center back of my skirt. And that's the top part, not the bottom part. And that's it. And then I have all the pieces to make my own skirt. Actually, no, I now need uh, bias. So this leftover fabric I have here, I want to cut bias tape for the finishing. Okay. And like you probably have seen me doing this before, you just... Let me get this. The hair is a little longer. You know, especially for like for the the hem of the skirt and the the cuff of the dress, you can always do just fold it, you know, hem it. But then for the the collar, I always like to, you know, the neckline, I like to have a bias tape finishing inside. And I'm cutting like one inch wide. I'll cut two strips. All right, so we got our bias. And you know what I want to do now is to figure out this lace part. And for that, so I got here my belt, my my thing, and um, I just want to think of the, the top, right? So how I do usually, that's a good tip for you, I just look in the mirror and I think where I can put the, the thing. So I kind of feel like putting here along the side. And um, because see how this is like long, so I'm just going to cut in half. And that's actually the first thing I'll do is to apply the lace on my shirt. Right next to the uh, neck here. I think it could be cool or maybe on the sleeve. I'll do it here. So I need, yeah, four of them. So I'm just basically just saving a little room here for my seam allowance. And then I'll attach this lace right here. I'm going to pin it. Make sure it's the right side. No, I think this is the wrong side. Yeah. Right there. So the shoulder line is right there. One and the other one right here. But one thing I was thinking is because this, this type of dress has so many variations, you know, you can use the same cut and do many different like embellishments and uh, cuts and stuff. So a good idea would be to make a shell one, you know, just make like a simple one. And then later on you go and, and, and then the second one you make, you know, I mean, the first one you make like a shell, you just save as a template and then you keep making other ones and you can change, change the length, change the embellishments. So I have the skirt here with her again, <laughs> the two parts of the skirt, and I'm going to sew the lace onto my, first, you know what, I'm going to, um, have the belt done and then because it's kind of boring so yeah you see for instance I noticed I noticed that um, this belt is a little too thin too uh, it's not very wide so that's something to keep in mind next time I would make the belt you know three four inches maybe but or you can have instead of the belt a piece of lace as well and uh,
All right, so the belt is done. Just want to poke the corners. And then obviously I got to iron this, this uh, belt. Okay, so I'll put the belt on the side here and the bias and then change it to zigzag and so this this um, lace it's finished on the edges so I don't gotta care you know usually when I do lace that crochet for instance that can unravel I usually just do a tight zigzag twice but this one is finished so I don't have to worry about it I'll just do a great zigzag all around it kind of like wide and you know long st long uh, stitch length because it's faster So here it is. I sewed the two parts of lace onto the top. And here is a little uneven. So I might have to trim the blouse, but it will be fine. Let's see by the end how this looks like. Okay, so the shirt is here. And then I'm going to sew the sides, okay, together. So I put right sides together and I'll just sew from the waist to the uh, cuff, right? Like the arm, all the sleeve. Oh, I need the straight stitch now. Okay, and the blouse is done, sort of, and it's the finishing, but you know, the the largest part is done. Now we go to the skirt. So the skirt is here. Remember how I had the um, this cut here, right? So I know what's center front and center back. So basically now I'm just going to join the two sides together. That's why I was saying like how uh, you might not even want to cut the side, right? Because it was joined. But the, the point is, if you have one side with a stitch, with a seam, and the other one without a seam, it will be uneven because then one is going to be heavier. That's why I just rather have, if I'm going to have a seam on one side, I'll have on the other side as well. The other thing you could do is just move the, the seam to the back, right? To the center back is another option. But in my case, I'm just going to do the two side seams. Okay, so I'm just going to join them together. All right, so we got the skirt and we got the top. Now I wanna press, okay? Cause then we press the seams open and it'll make it nice looking. And then we're gonna talk about the options we have when we, fi to finish this dress. How you're gonna join the the top and the skirt. But I must sew to get, uh, press it because it's gonna look nice. Okay, the skirt is done, then the top. Oh, and the top is nice if you snip this a little, a real, a little bit, just so it the curve goes. Look, this is like a curve trick. If you don't know, every time you're sewing a little curve, 
you want to do that so it's you know it if it, it falls nicely on the inside just a few all right I'm not even going to open the seams here. Just pressing really to And you know, you can always zigzag or surge this part. And then the last thing we got to uh, iron is our, I'm not even going to turn. So this is good. The belt, right? We got to press the belt. And the belt is totally optional because you might not even want to have a belt. They use the belt more like as embellishment and you can have all their types of embellishments. Okay. The tip is funny here, but it's okay. We'll fix it. So the belt is done. And now we're going to join. Now we're going to talk about the style of this dress because here's the thing. This is the blouse. All right, and you're gonna see how the skirt, so this is the center front, right? And you're gonna see how the skirt is wider. Look, oh, this is just some scraps. Look how the skirt is wider. And that's what it makes the 1920s look. So you, there's many different ways that you can do that. So basically, um, you can just sew exactly like this and come with a stitch from here to here and then have these two points hanging. You know how it's like, it's like a square, which is kind of cool. And then you put the belt over it. Or the other thing that shows in that, instruction, in that instructions is like, so the thing would be hanging here, but then you just tuck it in inside like this. And then it has like a double fold sort of thing that's also cool. But if you know me, guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to gather it because I think gathering will be just more like the picture that I posted the other day. We have like a gathered and then it's more like a drop waist gathered dress, right? And for that, I need my yarn. So I'm just going to gather the skirt a little bit and then fit, fit in with the, the top. And first I want to trim this so it's nice and also find the center front. And this, regardless the style you're going to try, you want to find the center front here. So I'm going to trim the excess here. And then do a little snip so I know where the center fronts and the center back are. Okay, put this in the back and then I'll go and just do a lightly gathering because it's not much, you know, you could, and that's how you think of the measurement too. It could be way wider if you want. And then there'll be more volume. But let's see how this one is going to look. I just go all the way up in my length and my width here and then do with my yarn on the inside, on the wrong side.
And I'm gonna go right over the edge line here. That's this little green line. Okay. So now I can pull my yarn, my thread and gather and it's not much. So I'll just do a little bit. I wish it was more actually because I want to have more volume, but that's good for now, for today. <laughs> Yeah, see, I gathered just a little bit and it's already enough. So I'm just going to even out here. The amount of gathering. I feel like every class I do that. Okay, then I have my marks there. Let's see, it's not perfect. So I have my center, my two marks here, and those I'm gonna match with my top, right? So this is the center front right here, look. Then I'll go with any side here that works. Find my center and then just match them together here. I'll place a pin. Oh God. <laughs> no, my thing is all tangled. Right there. And then I'll sew, sew, sew. Let's see if this reaches the side here. And so when I work with gathering stuff, I usually like even out when I'm in the machine, I ease it out so it works. Okay, look, it's a little longer, but then I can give a little ease here. And as I sew, I find, that's why I like to have the, the notches. So I, I know the, the middle, you know, the center of the front is matching the top and the, and the skirt. Look, okay. And then I'll just start stitching here, really. And then go all the way around with the straight stitch. And you can, you know, you can always just like pin it first to make sure you can baste it if you're a beginner. But look, it's, it's working. Put the sewing machine closer to you and let's get it going. Where is my side? Right here. Okay, and then finishing up, I just pull my, this thing out. And then the dress is almost done, but we have to do the finishing of the neck. So I'm gonna do that. 
you know, the dress is done. So I guess when they say one hour, it doesn't count to the finishing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here's the dress. And then I'm going to do the finishing of the uh, neck, right? Because I made the little mistake, I'm going to cheat a little and cut this. Just trim a little bit here so it doesn't, doesn't look so uneven. Kind of sketchy, but yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to put the bias tape and how I do the bias tape, you probably have done with me. Uh, let's see if it's enough. No, one is not enough, so I'm going to join them together, like I said. And so I'm just going to sew on the outside, right sides together, look, like that. I'm going to start from the back. So this is my back. I'm going to sew here the bias tape. Is it like this? Yeah, but it should start on this side, here, because <laughs> then it's on the right side of the machine, okay? Just like that. Here it is. And then just go and the, like give a little ease to the bias because this neckline is so curvy, like very, you know, it's like a, a circle basically. And so the bias has bias have has to have like room to fold later and not like crease your your neckline if you don't pull the as you're sewing don't pull the the bias tape much just keep sewing and give a little ease push it a little underneath the the foot stop there you know because I have all the leftover here so I just I always do that so I have the exact amount I need I cut I'm gonna sew it here right where I marked and if you have questions ask me because I show this is every class if you're never seeing it, I can show it to you Excuse me, and then just finish the stitching here. The next step is to fold it inside. <clears throat> so see how it's looking now? I sewed the bias on the outside, and I'm sorry that's black, you might not be able to see well, but look. Then I'm going to fold the bias on the inside like this. Okay, and I fold it a little here as well to make like a nice finishing. And then I do a top stitch, okay? <clears throat> I'm going to press it to help me a little.
that gives more room to fold. Oops, Ooh, too hot. And here it is, finishing up. The neckline, woo -hoo. look, not bad. I can press a little, and then uh, this is it, basically. We're gonna talk about the belt, right? But I think like the little other finishings, I'm going to do it on my own. And so what I want to tell you, and then I'll post the picture. But here it is, the idea of the belt. You can have the belt loose or, but I think how they show there is that they, you know, they stitch the belt on top of the, the waistline. It's a drop waist, but you know, and then you can do a, a bowl. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna do is just like stitch over this and then do a bow on the back because since I already put lace on the front, right? So I'll just do a bow here. Something like that. Or just do like, you know, just have the thing hanging. Uh, and then I'll probably have to hand stitch it. And uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about, oh yeah, so the other thing is you can also like have a big bow on the on the shoulder or you could have just a piece of fabric you know you can cut like a long strip of linen and make like a big bow and then have it hanging on the side on the back on the shoulder you can put lace on the sleeve and then the next step i have to do is to hem my sleeve and hem the dress and this is it look and then i'll post it on instagram tomorrow and i can do a nice photo of it but it's something like this. It doesn't look cool now because you can't see the whole thing, but check out my Instagram tomorrow, okay? If you like this class, please recommend to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions, please ask away, ask here, ask in the group, send me a message on Instagram, and I would love to see what you make, okay? I hope this helps, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for joining. See you next time.